He might be a Marvel expert, but he loves Star Wars too. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Hey everyone, welcome back to another interview-tastic episode of Empire Radio. I'm Jeremiah. I'm Drew. And I'm Mr. Marvel. Mr. Marvel? That's pretty crazy. We, this, is a, this is a Star Wars podcast. What is a Marvel <laughs> fan doing on here? But yes, we have our third interview that we're doing. And, you know, for quite a while now, for probably, what, 10 months, something like that, we've been part of the needlesslynerdy.com podcast network that David started. He's in the Discord, one of our fans. And it's kind of, it was a little sleeper, a little, like we're waiting for people to join and see if we can do some collabs. And Brian from Mr. Marvel's Minutes is, was someone who joined. Um, and we figured, hey, let's do a, let's, let's use this uh, network for, for something good. Let's, let's collab. And so, he has a, his own podcast, which he'll probably just talk about a little bit tonight. But um, we're excited to do a, a collab with this network that we are a part of. And it's cool to see different perspectives from different people. That's why we're doing interviews. But from someone who's a major Marvel fan putting their perspectives out on air on Star Wars would be an interesting take on things. So, Mr. Marvel, would you like to give a little... Well, some little information about yourself, about your podcast, what it's all about, and we can go on from there. Yeah, so I am Mr. Marvel. I am the host of Mr. Marvel's Minutes. You can find us, you know, everywhere from Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Just search at Mr. Marvel's Minutes. Awesome. Awesome. And so how long have you been doing that podcast specifically? So I started podcasting in January of this year. And it's been pretty awesome. And how frequently do you have your show out there? I do an episode every week, and then I team up with another podcast to be a co-host, and it's another MCU podcast. Ooh, double dipping over there, huh? Yep, the the (laughs) Earth 894 podcast. (laughs) All right, that's pretty cool. All right, so this is Star Wars, this is Empire Radio, and so... We like to hear different uh, perspectives on Star Wars. And so we know that you're a big Marvel fan, but you said that you're also a big Star Wars fan. And so the first question we have for you with this interview is, what is your Star Wars story? So how did you become a Star Wars fan? Any like cool stories or background information, all that jazz? Yeah, so how this is, is how to come. This is definitely going to age me right here. Um, so I grew up with a sister <laughs> who's about seven years older than me. So she actually got to experience the original trilogies in the theater. Um, and I oh, got wow. all the really cool hand me down toys. So growing up, not only did I have G.I. Joe's and Legos, but I had original Star Wars action figures. And that was just by far the coolest thing ever i mean ships characters lightsabers you name it and then around 1990 i got two vhs tapes for my birthday (laughs) (laughs) the adventure of r2d2 and c3po and the ewoks Ewoks. Um, (laughs) after that i was honestly hooked um and my family, you know, was like, all right, well, let's, you know, watch the original trilogy. So I watched those. I loved it. I couldn't get enough. Um, unfortunately, my mom was really big into Star Trek and I had to grow up with that as well. Um, so I, I, I'm very versatile in the, uh, <laughs> in the outer realms. Um, but it, it was cool. It was something that, you know, held over to what, 1999. And, you know, we got that really bad movie. But Ooh, moving past okay. that, you know, 23 <laughs> years later, I'm here and, 
you know, I get to share my experience with y'all. So it's pretty cool. So would you say your whole family is a Star Wars family? No, or? no, not at all. None of them. I, I don't think they understand it. Um, I've got Star Wars tattoos. And ever since, you know, Dang. Disney bought out Star Wars, they just say, oh, well, you just have Disney tattoos. I'm like, oh, come on. Oh. <laughs> but so your sister would be the only one who's. No, she's not even interested. I think that was oh, just not, not even that, that was a, a time <laughs> thing. <laughs> you have oh, any of those vintage toys? Um, I actually do have a lot of vintage toys still left over. Um, Ooh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Well, you and Drew can talk afterwards, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can see he's a collector, so I see that. And then our, the that. the interview we had last week, Nilda, she's a big collector too of Star Wars and other. She uh, makes my collection look. Really yeah, sad. hers is like yeah, 10 times bigger than Drew's, so they could talk about toys all day long. <laughs> but, yep. uh, all right, so that's your Star Wars story. It's always cool to see different, you know, how that all came about in people's lives. But people like, so on our podcast, um, everyone loves our ranking episodes where we do top fives of this, that, and everything. And so we figured the best way to do interviews with anyone is to do same rankings. And so we, for time's sakes, we're not going to be doing top fives. We're just going to do top twos. So, Drew, what is the first top two? Are we two basing is? off the list that we did last week? Yes. Okay. So, I, we're, I assume we're going to skip the toy conversation then? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> and then the first one's actually you. Do you want to go? No, I, I – oh, gosh. I re-edited it in the Discord so you can – Oh, it, I have that. I don't know. Let's see that. But okay. Um, top two ships. I'll stay it up. Top two yes. ships. It's going to be the Slave One and the Super Star Destroyer. So which one was number one? Uh, the Slave One. Slave One. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. I like that. All right. And so what is your explanation for why these are your top two? Well, I mean, hands down, Boba Fett is my guy. That is why I live and breathe Star okay. Wars. Spoiler alert for a, yeah. a future top two <laughs> going later on, but <laughs> um, but I mean, that's just it's the most iconic ship uh, in my mind. And then, I mean, the Super Star Destroyer. What more would any ten year old boy want than something that can just blow up anything that gets in its way? That is that is that's true. Fair. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts on the renaming of the slave one? That was my question. <laughs> I mean, in my eyes, it has not been renamed. <laughs> That's right. a good answer. Good answer. Yeah, the chat literally was like, "Well, uh, he won over Drew." That, that was pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. Drew's yep. a big Boba Fett fan. Yeah, and so yeah, um, just a little bit. Yeah, those are, it's a solid, solid top two. I don't think you yep. get a lot of complaints from. The fans from that one. Nope. Oh. All right. So that's a quick and easy one. Now, next one is a little a little difficult, I would say, for some people. But your top two lightsabers, because so, a lot of times you just see the color of the blade and you don't really see the hilt. So it's something I've never really cared about. But <laughs> how about you? I mean, definitely, it, it it's color for me in one aspect. Mace Windu's purple bladed lightsaber. Purple being one of my favorite colors. I actually um was at Disney. I made a lightsaber and I got to get the purple Kyber crystal and I've got that downstairs. I should have brought it up for the show. Well, um, and your logo is purple yeah, too. Yep. So, yeah. Um, I like purple a lot actually too. That's kind of my, <laughs> my theme a little bit. Uh, but then I mean, it's the iconic, the Darth Maul's double bladed lightsaber. That thing is just oh, okay. so, so cool. It is cool. Jesus. Checking all the boxes for me. I think we're going to be best friends, dude. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I but, actually uh, have the the double bladed um, from Disney as well. Yes. I, I hope to pick that up in February when I go. Ooh. Ooh. Or if my girlfriend is listening right now, she goes in <laughs> the end of September. Um, I know she's only in the room next door, so maybe she's hearing me. She could pick that up while she's there. <laughs> Ooh. Save me a trip. <laughs> so... Did you remember seeing the double blade saber in the theater when you were a kid? I, I do. I, I think I was like an adult by then, but yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it, it was something, it was so cool. It was surreal because growing up again with Star Wars, it's just one blade. It's one thing. Um, in the books, 
Um, there was uh, no, I don't even think in the books there was a double sided saber. Not a, not. Yeah. I don't Mm-mm. think so. Yeah, so, Drew and I don't know a lot about the EU stuff. That's a lot of stuff. EU stuff. Yeah. Our for, one of our former members, uh, he knows all about the EU. He could tell you if there was a double. Yeah. And say, well, if people in the chat might know if there was. Yeah. They like yeah. to read stuff. <laughs> but yeah, you know that is definitely an iconic moment in Star Wars. Is because mm-hmm. everyone. I, so I wasn't. I don't remember watching the Phantom Menace like the first time. Like I couldn't tell you. I whatever. But like, if I were to watch it as an adult. I'd be like, why is that hilt so long? Like, it doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. But then at the end of the movie, when he gets both ignited, it makes sense. Yeah. Also, they needed extra long so he could do his tricks. But <laughs> True. Yeah, Ray, um, Ray Park is amazing. He's a beast. Because yeah. <laughs> I think the reason why it had to be so long was so he could, like, throw it behind his back easy, more, a lot easier rather than a lot of the other tricks. But mm-hmm. – um, he kept wanting to get longer and longer and longer. And I was like, what, two feet long by the end of the whatever. But yeah, it's pretty awesome. long. Yeah. And Mace Windu definitely has an iconic thing just because of the color. Well, but... and it's gold too. The hill is like silver and gold, like wrapping. I think it's really cool. And it's super like minimalist hilt. I think, I think I like it a lot too. I thought I heard um, someone in the discord. They were talking about it, how, Technically, even though we don't see Mace Windu's lightsaber in Episode One, uh, technically back then he had a blue lightsaber. Well, the the figures when they came out with his first figure from Episode One, it was a blue lightsaber. Interesting. And then they changed it for the Clone Wars. So if you can pick up like the original ones, those were blue. It was a blue lightsaber. All right. Cool. Cool. Top two lightsabers. Drew, what's the next? topic yes the next topic is your top two droids Ooh, uh this goes back to you know boba fett bounty hunters ig88 and four lom i guess oh. yeah, lom or four lom i guess which one's he's i think it's lom i'm not sure i think it's Han or Han? What do you What do you ever want to yeah. call it? Han, <laughs> first of all. <laughs> but what? Go ahead and ex- go ahead and explain those. Well, I mean, again, so much. favorite. The, um, I mean, IG eighty eight is my favorite. We finally okay. got a little bit better of a glimpse of what he could do in the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was really cool. Again, it, it's just those characters that are in the back that nobody thinks about, and they just go right over your head. But they're they're really important if you think about it. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And any like was was that a hard list? Because there's so many droids out there. Like, was it easy for you to get those top two droids or did you You know honestly what I mean the, the first droid that comes to your mind is R two D two or C three PO. Um so it was definitely hard to really narrow them down, but I like right. bounty hunters. So. Yeah. Everyone loves a bounty hunter. Yeah. And I mean, those those two droids, too, kind of do show your age as well, too. Because, like, you didn't, like, say <laughs> Chopper <Yeah. laughs> or, like, BB-8. 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 Well, okay. I can't. I, mean, I, I do like the droids from the Clone Wars. I mean, you know, Roger Roger. That's just hilarious. Yeah, yeah. B-1. Right yeah. B-1 battle droids. Yeah. Yeah. But, but a lot of people's favorite has been lately and like they picked was the was k2so from rogue one yeah That's a lot of people like it k2so favorites yeah i think a lot more people are gonna like them when andor comes out so yes um cool solid solid uh all droid. Mm-hmm. all right so next top two musical themes or songs in star wars and so Whenever we bring up music in Star Wars on the podcast, we always like to say that music is like the breath of Star Wars, where if you take the music out of Star Wars, it just dies. Like, it's just not the same anymore. So we think the music is very, very important to what Star Wars is today. And so everyone has their favorite musical themes and songs from Star Wars. So what is yours? I mean, it, it's 
iconic the the main title theme at the scroll card right it just really gets you hyped up it's in every star wars series no matter what it is if it's a short if it's a movie if it's a cartoon it's there it's iconic to star wars and then of course i mean the the imperial march oh, yeah. i mean that that just yeah. makes my hair stand up every time i hear that because i know what's about to happen <laughs> yeah definitely it's definitely a scary scary foreboding theme um but yeah so would you say that when it comes to the music of star wars you like the older music or like with the mandalorian it's a completely different genre of music and we have same with um boba fett boba mm -hmm. fett was different and then and or we don't really know what that's gonna be like do you like have a favoritism towards the older style of star wars music or do you like where the newer stuff is going i do like where the newer stuff is going but you can't forget the classics that that True. is what got us to where we are today i'm just surprised you didn't say your favorite was the theme song to ewoks that, that slaps that, yeah, no, that that's just stuck in my head yeah. <laughs> that's no longer my favorite i love that song actually because my i have a kid and he loves it so much <laughs> like he just jumps up and down every time so yeah, yeah andrew our our previous host he uh is a musician <laughs> and when we did some episodes on the ewok stuff like he hated it like this was musically terrible like da, 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 like it was funny, um, but it's definitely like what you said, it's a knee slapper for the, the Ewoks theme. Yeah. Will in the chat's like, what about the holiday special? Well, I don't even remember anything from the holiday You don't special. remember those <laughs> concerts that they did in the holiday uh, special? Yeah. Did you, Brian, did you ever watch the no, holiday special? No, I, I never got to watch it. Really? Um, I, I mean, I've seen clips, uh, but I, I never actually watched it. Yeah, they, they have some clips of it on Disney plus um but you can oh, yeah. find full length versions on youtube that are like technically not supposed to be there but it's so old and nobody cares that they just leave it up so if you ever want to watch a terrible time <laughs> that's on youtube just type it in um, it's awkward and some of it's like way too it's it's appropriate some weird, there's some weird stuff like it's like it's weird dude yeah but but it's it's funny it's, it's fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, Drew, what's the next topic? Yes, the next topic is your top two characters. So starting from your number two, working your way up to your number one, what is we, your... We know number one. So again, <laughs> top two characters, my number two is going to be Darth Maul. Ah, perfect. Yeah. Yep. And and why would you say Darth Maul is your number two? I mean, well, one, Ray Park is incredible. He was born to play Darth Maul. I hated it that, you know, he was dismembered, but someone's got to lose one limb at least. Uh, but then the story carried over into the Clone Wars and it gave it a little bit of a different background. And you see his, you know, super evil brother and he's kind of like backing off like this is wrong. So deep down inside, you know, Darth Maul was just a, um, a vice, basically, that the Sith used. He could have been a really pivotal character doing his own thing. But, uh, you know, there can only be two. There can only be others. two. Yep. That's why he got cut into two pieces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, uh, cool. And then your number one, I think we know what it is, but number what is one, it? Boba Fett. Boba, Boba Fett. Fett. <laughs> <laughs> so you like bounty hunters but is there anything specific that makes him stand out for you i mean he literally says nothing uh, i mean what what you know one line that's it he, yeah. he's just incredible and he's again a such a pivotal p character where he's in the background doesn't do much like yeah i mean he he does a whole lot but he doesn't really do anything and yeah. now we've got a whole new Star Wars world being built off of this character. What is your thoughts of the Book of Boba? Oh, the Mandalorian season 12 where Boba made a cameo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I did not like it at all. I went into oh, wow. it thinking this is going to be the most awesome show ever. 
we finally made it and i was completely let down he should have been what he was at the end of the series at the beginning he should have been vicious he should have been ruthless and he wasn't there's nothing about that show that uh, that about him that in that show you didn't like no it it was a what about the lando 2.5 you like okay they don't count those that's that's (laughs) don't count that but you didn't like any of like the the stuff with the Tuscan Raiders and like him joining into that kind of culture and I mean it, it was cool that we finally made it canon that he survived the Sarlacc. That was really about the only thing I enjoyed. All right. They, okay. they did a disjustice to <laughs> the the Star Wars universe. Yeah, my biggest those. complaint. I mean, I I like parts of it. Um, but my biggest complaint of overall was that. He took his helmet off all the time for no reason, and it drove me nuts. Like, even when he would just – he would walk out of a place and take his helmet off and then walk out in the open. And for – why? Like, people know you as Boba Fett. They don't – they know you without your helmet on. Like, especially when you're walking through the city, and he took his helmet off during those parts. So it's a, it, it just bothered me. But Yeah, we had mixed feelings about the show, but – I, I don't hate yeah. it that much. I think I don't hate it, but it was just, I felt like it was, it didn't have an end goal. Like it didn't move towards mm-hmm. anything. And so that was kind of like the big disappointment, but yeah. And then the thing at the end with Cobb Vant and the, it was, uh, I, I, like, I, nobody I cares. Did that part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause but, yeah, but they, we'll definitely be seeing more of him though. Like we know that he's still alive and who Cobb Vant and Boba Fett. Uh, Boba Fett. So we'll still be seeing more of him, and yeah, you know, I I wonder if he'll be good as his ba- the back character in the new Mando show. <laughs> <laughs> but I wonder if we're gonna see him, or I should not say see Boba Fett, but if we'll see Tamora Morrison as like a clone in Andor or anything like that, because in the trailer there is still there's some clones in there. So true. Um. I'm wondering if we're gonna if he's gonna reprise his role as a clone at all, which would be cool. I mean, he did. And yeah, he made an appearance in, in uh, Obi Wan. So, yeah. so, so I mean, it's possible. I mean, probably. So, and we know that he's. I mean, they're gonna. He's gonna be Rex in the Ahsoka show for sure. Oh yeah, and then if they didn't, if they don't do that, they're gonna they're dropping the biggest ball of all time. I so I think that'd be cool if. If Andor, like if for like a younger Boba Fett, they used uh, the actor for a young Boba Fett from Clone Wars or from Attack of the Clones. What's his name? I can never remember his name. You're putting me on the spot, Jeremy. I I can't remember his name. I can't remember it either. But uh, yeah, so Boba Fett, cool guy. Got got my favorite still. Got still dealt dealt a bad dish for. The I think Boba those Fett. two, the two you just said, Mister Marvel, were my. I'm pretty sure were my top two. Something like that. Probably they're definitely both in my top five. Right. All right. Cool. So that was top two characters. So next, top two moments in all of Star Wars. What's your number two? Number two, when Mace Windu decapitated Jango Fett. Oh, dang. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> That's pretty... All right. So why why do you like that so much? <laughs> because that gave us the arc of Boba Fett. True. If yeah. If that never happened, there'd be no Boba Fett. The chat, dark. That's really yeah. dark. <laughs> yeah. it, is, it is interesting, like, yeah. because... When we see his story pick up in the Clone Wars, mm-hmm. it's him seeking revenge on Mace Windu and him getting caught up with other bounty hunters. And so, mm-hmm. like, I wonder what his story would be if his father wasn't killed. Like, would he still become a bounty hunter trained by his father? Or would he become a Mandalorian sp- more specifically? Like, join the Mandalorian somehow? Like, be, it's interesting. What do you think, Brian? What do you think his story would be if he, if Django did not die? You know, I, I, he'd probably be some spice farmer. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so if you, so, so some people don't even know this, but so if you watch that scene, when his head gets cut off, the helmet goes one way, 
but a shadow of his head goes the other way. Have mm-hmm. you seen that? So if you go watch that, his head drops out and goes the opposite direction. So when Boba picks up the helmet and puts his head to it, his head, dad, dad's head is literally like 10 feet away on the ground. <laughs> yeah, it's not as... <laughs> Well, because I always thought, too, if you picked it up, like, he's holding it long enough, the head will just slowly fall out <laughs> right? of it. Well, that, that didn't happen, so. All right, so that's your number two. What's your number one moment in all of Star Wars? Whew. When Darth Maul killed Qui-Gon Jinn. Oh, dang. Dang. All right, you gotta, we got to hear it. Why? Again, it's another just arc. It gives us the reason why Kenobi just wants to, you know, get out there and start pounding on these guys. Yeah, that is true. Do you think? I I like that both your moments have to do with both your two favorite characters too. That is interesting. Yeah, 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 that's pretty solid. I like that. So, do you think if? Qui-Gon was not killed <laughs> and he trained Anakin, would we have had a different result with Anakin's fate? I'd say 100% yes. Yeah, and I Go ahead, Drew. I was going to say in a good way, or do you think it would be even darker? Ooh, I mean, it could go either way, really. I feel like it would be in a good way um, and he probably wouldn't have gone down the uh, the path of darkness, but you know, I'm not George Lucas, but I'd like to think that. Yeah, I the last I this was a last weekend or two weekends ago or something. I uh, I watched Phantom Menace for the first time in, in quite a while, and I was just kind of comparing. Okay, I was really focusing on what Qui Gon was saying, like throughout the whole show, and it's like his wisdom and how he's always about focusing on the moment and not worrying about the future, but then. When we go talk to Yoda later in the movie, he's always talking about the future and being fearful. And it was Anakin was fearing about the future of his wife that caused him to turn to the dark side. So if he learned to focus on the moment and what's happening now, like things would have been different. I'd never noticed that in the movie before. Mm. Like I just kind of me, and I was like, dang. We got people in the Discord that hate Yoda. Like really with a pet. Oh, David and Puzzler, they just hate no, Yoda so much. Right worst, now. worst character Girl, ever. Feel free to block him. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I thought that yeah. was interesting watching the movie uh, the first. The chat was like, "What? Okay, that's crazy." <laughs> and they're like, "Wait, oh yeah, that makes sense." So yeah, you're you're stirring up the pet the the chat a little bit but yeah puzzler's like what i hate yoda okay stop okay i can't (laughs) can't all right drew what's the next topic all right your top two least favorite moments the opposite of the spectrum Mm -hmm. something that not a lot of people think about really but what are the two things you just hate the most in star wars well i'll give this one to the chat um the Jedi training where Luke is carrying Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. Why do you oh, hate that so much? It's just, I mean, it is one of Jim Henson's worst creations. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, There's a, okay, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, um. so one of the episodes, podcast episodes we did, a couple of months, a few months ago, was uh, we we did like the forces of destiny, like the little shorts that are on Disney Plus. Um, this little quick, like two three minute stories, and there's actually more of that training scene of Luke and Yoda on Dagobah, and they're up in the trees and stuff. So maybe maybe if you watch that, maybe it'll help you like the live action stuff a little bit better. But I was just thinking that this. That's funny because, like, it is kind of funny how he just was just right on his back. So, how did you feel about in uh, the uh, the book of Boba Fett when Luke is training Grogu? Yeah, and uh, that did, did you hate that too, or is he's like, okay, like this is kind of cool? But or were you I, mad that Luke didn't climb on Grogu's back? Right, <laughs> I was mad about that. I I just dislike Grogu. 
Uh, I said oh, it. I'm sorry. You and Jeremiah are friends. No, so I, no. I, he was good for a while, but like, I'm done with that gimmick. But as I'm sitting here with a Grogu shirt, but I'm like, I back. guess he's my bad guy. There for the the long run because he's already been taken back by. Oh yeah, by Mando. And so. if you see the bootleg trailer, half of yeah. it's Grogu. <laughs> yeah, like I'm, I'm over that gimmick. So I'm, I'm with you on that. All right, so that was your number two. What is your number one or bottom favorite moment, least favorite moment? The introduction of Jar Jar Binks. Oh, dang. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, yeah. we know everyone, he gets a lot of hate, but why Why do you say that? It, it just it really ruined it for me. I mean, not only was he incredibly annoying, but the fact that he was so annoying and would do stupid things, but it would always come out and work for him at the end. It's just like, come on, guy. It, 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 <laughs> Dark Lord. Yeah, he's Dark Lord of the Sith. Like, he's Darth Jar Jar. Like, <laughs> but, so when you say the introduction, do you mean like the first scene? Or just like oh, just, him just in the, all of episode the, one? The introduction just in general. We could have gone without Jar Jar Binks. I mean, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> they... <laughs> They still had to figure out a way to get some allies for people in Naboo, and that was the Gungans, so. Yeah, but that's true. I, I think people have grown to appreciate Jar Jar more than they did originally. Like, when was the last time you watched episode one? Oh, I mean, 10 years ago. Really? You didn't yeah. like it. You should, you should watch it. It's... I just watched it. It's not as terrible. I think I think there's other issues with the movie that are bigger than Jar Jar. Like he's has his moments, but it's like I think there's other things you could dislike about that movie, but that's okay. But yeah, Jar Jar Binks. He's he's definitely a character. <laughs> <laughs> that All is right. True. So next up, so rank the trilogy. So what's your Least favorite, all the way up to your top. What's of your favorite trilogies? So I mean, going for the trilogies, and you you want least favorite first? Yeah, go out to start at the bottom and work your way up. All right. So least favorite, A New Hope. No trilogies. Oh, sequel I'm trilogy, sorry. S- sequel trilogy, prequel trilogy, original trilogy. What's your bottom trilogy? Then, then my bottom trilogy would have to be the sequels. All right. Um, okay. Then that gets middle tough. trilogy. Yeah, then the middle trilogy, and then I mean the original trilogy being number one. I like All that. Right. All right, solid. That's. I feel like for your generation of Star Wars fans, that's probably how it <laughs> normally is. I think when you get to more people my age and Drew's age, it's kind of like you can go either way, and then yeah. Um, uh, the younger people who are just experiencing Star Wars for the first time are really liking the, the sequel trilogy. So, mm-hmm. all right, that's cool. That's all right, definitely. So, Drew, what's the final talking point? Final question: Rank all eleven films from your least to your favorite. All right, I, I might get some hate in the chat for this, so I apologize in advance. Um, they're ready. They're they're. Their fingers are getting ready. We have a wide yeah. range of, yeah. of likes and dislikes, so you'll have people defending you probably too. Yeah. So, all right. Bot- what's your least favorite movie in all of Star Wars? Solo. Oh. Okay. Oh, really? That's the biggest shocker right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so why? Solo. <laughs> so why is Solo so far down the bottom for you? It it just really wasn't needed. It was something. Obviously, they were trying to fill in a gap. And give us a little storyline, but we we didn't need it. I, I was fine with where we were at. Okay, okay, but but your boy showed up at the end. How did you feel when the, your boy showed up? I just was it like cool at least when that happened? Like were you like, oh yeah? Or were you hyped for at least a minute? No, Mm-mm. no, no, no. It was just <laughs> oh, a terrible movie. Really? I'm, I'm pretty sure I probably fell asleep in the theater watching it. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, that broke my heart a little bit. <laughs> All right, maybe you are getting some hate in the chat. Yeah. I, don't I don't know. I don't know. We we like solo here at Empire Radio. I I think when we did our top five moments, my number five was 
the mall. mall mall reveal in solo yeah that's definitely up there for me i don't know if that was in my top five but, but now good. that they're not doing movies really anymore <laughs> and the whole like i because they the reason i liked it so much was because it was opening the door to more mall story and live action like i thought that's what they were gonna do and now we're probably not gonna see that like i don't know if we'll ever see live action mall again like but i mean he could be an andor could be probably not though no we'll probably see. not but that would be all kind right of cool all right so, so solo is all at the bottom so what's your number 10 number 10 attack of the clones episode two all right okay. interesting interesting and why do you say that again it was just one of those we we didn't need oh really yeah i i just I, honestly i just felt like episode one two and three were just a total letdown to me oh dang would you would you say that the prequel trilogy was elevated by the clone wars show oh definitely definitely clone so wars the clone wars show yeah. the, okay. the show helped it <laughs> i guess yeah scary. i did like it <laughs> that's that's interesting because like you know when you were growing up with the original trilogy were you were you never curious about what the clone wars was like with that reference that we get no, I, I think at that time I was just too young to even think beyond what is in front of me right now. Right. Mm. Interesting. That's fair. Yeah, I remember seeing episode one for the first time in theaters. And I loved it, but I was also like, what? Eight? Maybe? Something like that. Seven? Something like that. Yeah, so I guess age does matter when you're watching something, like your ability to critique things. So like, I wonder True. if those like, movies come out now, it'd be probably a different conversation, right? We might not have Jar Jar, so true, <laughs> or the high right. ground, or the high ground. All right, so what is your number nine? Number nine would be Phantom Menace. All right. So <laughs> why do you like that movie a little bit more than Attack of the Clones? We, we, I mean, we get to, you know, meet young Anakin. So that was pretty cool. Right. Oh, that's true. Little Annie? Yeah. Annie was okay then. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Shots fired. Okay. That's all right. Introduction to little Annie. All right. Your now, number. At this point, I'm kind of scared, personally. But we'll just. Yeah, I mean, we're crossing go. some off here, so it gets weird now. Okay. Um, here we go. All right. Number the, eight. The Force Awakens. Okay. And why would you say that? It was just a remastered A New Hope. True. I could see that. In hindsight. I realized that when I first saw it, I didn't really, really put that together yet. But yeah, I don't know. I I see. I've watched videos of people doing all the parallels, and maybe it was intentional. But Bro, I feel like intentional. I I feel like if you there's only technically like ten different storylines in all of storytelling. Like so, like you could look take like any movie and like make parallels with. A new hope and it's like the same story like i don't know <laughs> but definitely now were you hyped for the, the oh, sequel oh my when god came out? i was so hyped this was going to be incredible so were you really sad then yes yes oh. I, I was like oh. in the theater in the like, theater you didn't like it in the moment one uh we went to go see it opening night um and at that time you couldn't really reserve seats so it was you know go get your ticket there you go and we got stuck first row so oh, that was oh. terrible <laughs> i have never seen a movie first row in my entire life until there the Dang. the seats didn't yeah. even recline oh it was but i think the experience <laughs> was just bad <laughs> yeah yeah that's funny 
All right. That was your number eight. What is your number seven spot? Number seven is going to be The Last Jedi. Okay. I was getting nervous <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I thought that was going to be your number one for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So good. why do you like that a little bit more than The Force Awakens? We just get a little bit more development. Um, you know, it, it left us hanging at the end of The Force Awakens. So right. now I'm like, all right, what is about to happen in this next movie? You know, obviously we had to wait some time, but I was excited. I was just anticipating something bigger. Yeah, I think we all were. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely my least favorite Star Wars movie of all time. Yeah. Um. Now, a lot of times we say that a lot of people say that even though they didn't like the movie, they think that it's the best looking Star Wars ever made. Would you agree with that statement? Like the cinematography and the visuals and all that stuff? Uh, I mean, I'd say it's a hit or miss on that. Yes, with today's, you know, film and the, the CG that we have now. Yeah, it was incredible. Um but for me, I, I'm a sucker for the classic. All right. I, I get behind that too. But. All right. Number six. Well, we can only go one place. The Rise of a Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So, so you have seven, eight, nine, the trilogy in a row just mm -hmm. as they came out. So yep. why did you think episode nine was the best of the sequel trilogy it opened up a universe for us um it closed a story in a sense but it gave us with our imagination just like when you know number three ended what else could they do you know when mm. number six was over well is, is this it they can't go backwards well you know what they did? They went backwards. So it, <laughs> it, it, it gave us a chance for something new. Now, yeah. are you hopeful for the future of Star Wars? Okay. No. <laughs> I, I am hopeful, but it's got to come off Disney Plus. It's got to get back to the big screen. Oh, okay. really? Okay. So you're not a huge fan of the new shows or anything? I, I mean, I do like the new shows, but I don't know. I guess I'm an instant gratification. I don't want to wait oh, you know, every Wednesday, yeah. every Friday for these releases. Mm -hmm. So you the feel theater. the same with the Marvel stuff as well then? Oh, totally. The The Disney okay. Plus shows on Marvel are... Ooh. 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 I, I, we got to talk. <laughs> when we're done with this list, we're going to do our commercial break, and then we're going to talk some Marvel for a little bit, I think. <laughs> Okay. I want to hear some knowledge. <laughs> okay. Interesting. So that was number six. So number five. Well, that leaves one of the best, Revenge of the Sith. Okay. Okay. I was kind of wondering like, when you were going to say that one because I yeah. felt like it was towards the bottom for you, mm -hmm. but it's number five spot, top five. So what? why do you like that movie? I mean, it, it gave us Maul. It, it really did so much um it, little annie yeah little annie it i mean he went crazy <laughs> yeah all it, right it, it was good all right cool all right number four who a new hope oh number four is number four episode is four. four okay yeah. cool four. so it's the classic the original is that just something that, special it, for you yeah it's something it's where it started really true now, I don't know if you know this, but Jeremiah thinks the first half of A New Hope is trash. Hey, hey, don't throw me under the bus. Uh, I got I got but you. I get some old that, That's one of my uh, most infamous statements in the past two and a half years that we've been doing this is True. I said when we did our movie rankings, I was like, the first half of A New Hope is trash. And there's a lot of memes in the world from that statement. <laughs> But what what anything specific about the New Hope, like the story or anything about that movie that you absolutely love, other than just being what started it at all? Yeah, I, I mean, the little quirky one-liners. There, there were just little things that just stood out in my head, 
And I enjoyed that. I mean, it, it does bring us to now, I mean, full 180, 360, whatever you want to say, it, it's, we're, we're back at it right now. We're seeing the beginning of it. Cool, cool. Yeah. All right. Number three, Return of the Jedi. All right. Episode six. Interesting. Now, what do you have to say about that movie? Well, Anything specific that you like about that movie? Nothing specific. It just, it holds a place in the original trilogies. And without it, would we have any other Jedis? I mean, no pun or playing on the words, but it, it's true. It it gave us a Jedi, what this yeah. whole franchise is all about. And you don't see them, you don't hear about them, and then there you go. You've got your Jedi. So now I'm thinking, so you watched the Ewok show before you saw this movie, right? Mm-hmm. So do you think that influenced how much you like it? That <laughs> It was like nostalgic, like, oh, I know these guys. There's Wicked. I know Wicked. I think that definitely could play a big part in it. Um, especially, I mean, the, the canon aspect of the Ewoks. I mean, they ate people. So that was all supposedly, awesome. yeah. supposedly, we don't know that for sure. In, in the book, it has a, a little video of the meeting or not a video, but a, an image. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Where do you think they got that dress for Leia? True. Uh, no one thought about how fast they got that dress. Mm-hmm. And also, why did she have to change into that dress? And because she's yeah. an honored guest. I'm just I mean, saying they were gonna eat her. Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, they were gonna eat. They were gonna eat Han and Luke. So. Yep. All right. Before we get, so obviously we only got two movies left. So we'll know what your number one is when you give us your number two. So before we do that, we can put a little commercial break and listen to our sponsor for tonight that we play every week, Wesley Andrews Coffee and Tea out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. If you're looking for a great cup of coffee or tea, take a listen to this sponsor. Hey everyone, Andrew here. I'm pleased to tell you that the sponsor of today's episode is Wesley Andrews Coffee and Tea. If you don't know anything about Wesley Andrews, you definitely should. They're an award-winning coffee roaster and shop in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and they make fantastic coffee. The awesome thing is that whether you live in the Twin Cities or not, you can get their coffee beans delivered straight to your door by ordering them online. They even have a subscription service that ensures you never run out of amazing coffee. If you've been looking for some new coffee to try or a way to elevate your normal coffee routine, now's your chance. Head over to wesleyandrews.cc, use the code Empire Radio, that's with a capital E and a capital R with no space at checkout, to get 15% off your first purchase of any bags of coffee or a coffee subscription. I can't think of a better deal. Get 15% off some great coffee, support a small business, and support your favorite Star Wars podcast. In the words of Emperor Palpatine, do it. Do it. Do it. All right. Hey, oh, oh, Andrew that's again. not supposed to happen. Oh, technical difficulties. <laughs> All right, cool. Your top two now of your movie rankings. What's number two? The Empire Strikes Back. Oh, okay. I was thinking that was going to be your number one, but... Well, we know what his number one is now. All right, Empire Strikes Back. It's a classic number one. Why do you like that movie so much? Again, I mean, you you said it right there. It, it's a classic. It was epic. It had everything a little kid wants to see. Except for Yoda riding on the back of... It's <laughs> <laughs> like that. I want to see that. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. And so, your number one movie. Well... You guessed it. Rogue One. Rogue One. There okay. it is. Interesting. Interesting. So why is that your favorite Star Wars movie of all time? Oh, I mean, it was so well put together. Uh, you've got to look at it from the bigger picture. We're seeing them building the Death Star. That is epic. We've seen the Death Star. We've never actually seen them building the Death Star in a sense. We, we see 
so many little details. We get some old character throwbacks. I mean, obviously it's a, a prequel to all of this. Um, right. But, you know, in, in my eyes, that movie was just most epic. It had the real, you know, I don't know. They got down to the, the knit and grit of it. We saw some crazy action. It was, I don't know, it was just amazing. Every little yep, bit of it. True. Yep. And it's hard I to mean, complain about that movie at all. So the, the yeah. And the end we, we see Leia, you know, yeah. send off R2D2. Yeah. So you were greatly let down watching episode seven. And so you didn't have high hopes, but did you have like, do you think that Rogue One was going to be better or do you like kind of like going into it with like, all right, low expectations. Like, yeah. Prove very, to me that you can do good. Very low expectations. Uh, and when you walked out, you were like hopeful for the future of Star Wars again. Oh, uh, it, it just it it literally put me back. You know, being this little nine year old kid, like wow, I I just saw it, it. did its job. Yeah, it, it did its what job. Seven should have done for you. All right, cool. Yeah. So just to recap, I wrote down your answers. So from the bottom, Solo. Episode two, episode one, seven, eight, nine, three, four, six, five, and Rogue One is your movie rankings. It's a thing that I believe every Star Wars fan should do is rank their movies. True. And if we ever get another movie, I don't know, we'll have to add that to the list too, but we'll never know. Because I think they're, I don't know if they're, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't ever do a movie again, but. Well, I'm, I mean, Taika Waititi still is supposed to do it, so... Mm -hmm. Supposedly. But, like, it was supposed to be next year. What if they just... Drop well, like, they haven't, even, <laughs> they haven't even started anything with it, so... Yeah. But... Well, COVID kind of put a wrench in everything, though. That is true. But that was supposed because it was supposed to come out this year, 2022. And then they delayed it to 2023 because of COVID... But now they just haven't even done anything. So yeah. All and right. He, well, he just tried to get Natalie Portman to star in it. Yeah, yeah. For the first time like, ever. Yeah. <laughs> what a what an opportunity for her. Um, <laughs> all right. So that concludes the interview portion of Mr. Marvel. And so we thank you for all your insight and rankings and thoughts on Star Wars. Um, and so we haven't really talked about it a lot, but maybe in the future we'll be on his podcast and we can talk about Marvel stuff. Cause and I'm sure we'll be talking about a little bit Marvel tonight after some of these voicemails coming up, but yeah, do a before or after voicemails, I think we should talk Marvel. No, right well, now. some of the, some of the voicemails have to do with Marvel. Oh, so true, that's what I'm true, saying. True. So, uh, so I look forward to that whenever that happens, whether that's soon or months from now, I don't really care, but, I look forward to talking about Marvel in one way or another because I watch all the shows. I see all the movies. I, I'm i hyped about all that mm -hmm. stuff too. And this weekend was a great weekend of Marvel announcements. But anyway, let's transition over to voicemail time. It's voicemail time. All right, cool, cool. So tonight we have five voicemails. And so first two are, is from a regular Jedi Master, which has some, some interesting things to say tonight. So let's listen to the first one. Hello, Empire Radio. Jedi Master Caden Hendricks here with another mini Imperial Coliseum. So who would win... You know, both at their primes, you know, whatever, all that, all that good stuff. Who would win? Darth Vader versus Yoda. Let me know what you think, and may the Force be with you, always. All right. Interesting pair. At That's their prime. Cool. So, Yoda at his prime, is that episode three? Is Because he's all is that right? agent, or is it when it's like... 300 years Republic? before during the higher public or something. So is his, is his peak better than it was in the prequel trilogy? Are we going to say that? Or are we going to say prequel trilogy is his peak? 
Got to hatch lay some terms. What do you guys think? Well, at one point, he didn't have to use a cane to just normally walk around. So probably whenever that was because he could probably flip even more. <laughs> so maybe All right, that. so we'll take we'll take uh prequel trilogy Yoda, but give him like pre-cane. We'll we'll give him a little more stamina. We'll give him like a 30% increase on stano, stamina and so and agility and boost and all that stuff. So and, and then, then Vader Vader at his peak will say it's Kenobi show. Kenobi show like probably a little, bit, probably a little after. Maybe a little bit after that. I would um, say Yoda then. 100%. You think Yoda would win? I mean, Kenobi just beat him. So. Well. There's a little. He had mixed feelings. Anakin was in there a little bit. There are a little. His emotions were. Uh, but Yoda could get Anakin out of him too, I bet. I don't know. I don't think so. I think. I don't think. Vader or Anakin would have cared about Yoda in the moment emotionally, but I don't know, Mr. Marvel, what do you think? Vader or Yoda? I'm going to go with Vader all the way. All right. He does have the uh, the height advantage. You you gotta, because he, because what is Vader is what high ground in, in the suit. Vader is what? Like it's probably like six, four, six, six, four, six, six or something like that. He's super tall. I it was taller than that. It might have been taller than that. Maybe like 6'10". I don't know. I can't I remember. Chat, chat, let us know. Chat, Go to w- Wikipedia and see I don't how... Know why in my mind, I was thinking like 7'2", but maybe I'm off. Oh, dang. <laughs> I thought it was big. It was big boy. Um, I would say... I think it would be a close fight. Um, But I think Yoda would, would win because... The only thing that defeated Yoda was the Force Lightning. That's kind of what. And, and Vader doesn't he have caught it half the time. Yeah, but he still got overpowered at the end with the last push. True. When it exploded, so I would that say. Wasn't at his prime. Oh yeah, that is true. I'm still gonna go with Yoda. Yeah, and and Vader can't Force Lightning because because Vader true. might not even be able to reach. He's so tall, he probably wouldn't be able to reach Yoda all the way down to hit him. True, he would. <laughs> so you could just, Yoda could just not flip and just stand there and just break his ankles. <laughs> All right. Thanks for that question, Jedi Master Caden Hendricks. But you sent a second one. This is not a question. This is you got the the audio on this one is a little hard to understand, but it's a uh, joke? it there there is a joke in, in it. Oh, so okay. we gotta we gotta pay attention to the joke. All right. But let's listen to this. Hello, Empire. This is Jedi Master Caden Hendricks here. I was thinking about the Hosnian Star Cruiser, the like immersive experience thing at Disney that you have to pay five grand for two nights. Uh, yeah, expensive. But who brings me my food when I order it on the space station? For it to be fully immersive, I would want it to be Darth Waiter. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. And may the force be with you, always. Uh. Darth Waiter. That that is actually kind of good. You like that? Like they should actually have that as the waiters at this. If you're paying five thousand dollars for two nights, I better be having Darth Waiter show up and serving my food. That's so expensive. Did, did you see that video of the drink that they make where it has like the bubble that like he throws on the drink and it explodes on top of it? You ever see that video that just came out like a couple weeks ago? No. But okay. I should go watch it. It's kind of cool, but not $5,000. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jedi Master, for that. All right. Next question is our first. has multiple questions in it, but there is a, a Marvel question here, and this is from Lucy. Hi, everyone. Lucy here, and it has been far too long since I've sent in a voicemail. I'm assuming you're doing another interview, so hello there to the interviewee. I took a quick break from my podcast for the week, which gave me some much-needed time to breathe and send in this voicemail. First off, I have officially started watching all the Marvel shows for the first time, and it is a lot. People seem to say it's better to watch them in timeline order instead of release order, so that's what I'm doing. Given that I'm on Iron Man 2, I have a long ways to go. 
Do you all agree that Timeline is the best way to watch, or do you have any other suggestions or thoughts? Also, sneak peek, I am currently writing another fanfiction from a prompt I was given by Drew himself. Ooh. He wanted to know how Reva survived Order 66 and what her life was like as a youngling. I yes. don't know if he wanted a story that got you attached yeah. to new younglings and then made you cry when they all died, but that's where this is heading, so... Ooh. <laughs> Anyways, thanks. May the Force be with you. All right. Now, now, now Lucy's Thank in you, the chat Lucy. right now, and she, said she had no clue that the guest was a Marvel person. Yeah, so. I was like... Cause I, did we mention last week? No. Was, so, yeah, so she wouldn't have known, but... I was well, like, this is like Iron Man three right now too. All right, cool, cool. So, I will. I have my thoughts, but we should let the expert yes, answer her question. Sure. So, chronological timeline or release timeline for the movies and shows and stuff. How would you go about so, that, Mr. Marvel? For me, I've only been able to watch them in release, obviously. Right now, yes, mm-hmm. I have gone back and watched chronologically, and that is definitely the way it should be done. Because if, if you start watching, you know, where, where is she at? What, Iron Man 3 right now? Yeah. I mean, there's so much more before that, but it doesn't really play onto that. So you really need to do chronologically. And now, you know, with Disney Plus, you have the convenience to actually do that. Right. True. Right. So do you think that you should watch Star Wars in chronologically as well? I would say yes. Oh, all right. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. So for my thoughts, so I've watched everything as they came out as well. Um, but like, it's kind of like with the Clone Wars show, like there's a release order and then there's the, the timeline chron- chronology that you should watch it. Like, I think that with the Clone Wars, yeah, there's parts of it that should be watched in chronological order just because kind of sometimes the story gets out of whack. But like a lot of times they're just like a couple episode arcs that doesn't really matter when you watch it. So it's not as important. But like so like I kind of feel like that with the Marvel movies where obviously, yeah, Captain America, the first Avenger, takes place way back when. And so like if you're doing chronological it kinda matters. But like some of the other stuff that I must watching, like it doesn't really matter for me. Just because it's kind of like a standalone film, like Guardians of the Galaxy, like the first movie. Like, you can watch that yeah. and it doesn't really spoil anything, really. Um, but, um, but, I, I mean, w- that, does, that does help with, like, Thanos a little bit. That's true. So, but I, I would say, though, that um, bef- if you're not, cause I, I can't remember if she is, is she doing, and maybe she can say in the chat if she is watching it chronologically. She is. She okay, so then that will help because I was going to say for sure watch Black Widow before you watch Infinity War and Endgame because that's, that's, that movie takes place before that, and so you should watch that. Um, I don't want to give be too spo- spoilery, but after you finish Phase 3, so Avengers Endgame, I would recommend you go watch the other uh, Spider-Man movies. Mm-hmm. Um, the Tobey Maguire and Tom Holland stuff. Just just to have that in your repertoire of of Marvel stuff. I, they're not... I don't know. How many of those are on Disney I Plus? I think uh, Spider-Man is on Disney Plus now. If not, it should be within, you know... Because I know... I know the the most recent one is not on Disney Plus, but I'm wondering are all the other the other five like the the uh, original Tobey Maguire trilogy and Andrew Mad- Andrew, Andrew Garfield. Garfield? I can't those remember if those are on be. Disney Plus, was but it, I swear I just saw them on Netflix. I think I can't remember, but Lucy, yes. So yeah, after you, fi- there's, they're not on Disney Plus. Right. So after Phase Three, after you watch Endgame. You should go watch those as well, just to have those, because that's important, I would say. Um, and maybe you should watch the X-Men films, too. Oh, yeah, I forgot about those. Because those they were acquired by Disney recently, and they are going to be in the future. Those are on Disney. Those are, are, are being put on Disney+. Plus. And so I would recommend watching those, too. Um, they're not part of the canon necessarily. They 
depending on which, how you look at things, but it would be good to have it in your repertoire of knowledge. And I will say that they did announce that they're putting Logan on Disney plus rated R Logan is one of my favorite superhero movies of all time. It is rated R. It is very, very gory and bloody and stuff. So Lucy, I don't know if your parents will allow you to watch something like that, but if you are allowed, definitely watch that too. Um, yeah, and Amazing Spider-Man, the first movie, is on Netflix. The first uh, Andrew Garfield movie. Yes, and I don't know where the other ones are. Maybe. So, you know, I don't know. I think, yes, yeah, so like after Phase 3, it would be a good time to like take a deep breath and maybe watch some other stuff just to gain your composure because those last two Avenger movies are very emotional and intense, so... Taking a new pace of things with the other stuff, it would be a good idea, I would say. But any other comments, Mr. Marvel, on that? Um, I would just throw into the mix um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, what else do we have? Inhumans. Just some of those. Uh, what? Agent Carter. Oh, um, yeah, all those Those shows. NBC shows or ABC, whatever they were. Yeah. And those are all on Disney Plus, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and I I have yet to watch like the the Daredevil and oh, all really? them all them shows. Like I got to because they announced yes. the new show, an eighteen episode show with Daredevil coming out in a couple years. So I want to watch all that stuff. So, but yes, and then you got yeah, all the shows too. At least the first two seasons of Daredevil. Yeah, and you got all the shows too, Lucy, to watch that came out in Phase Four, which. I really love WandaVision. I really love Loki. I think those two shows are amazing. The other shows were kind of okay. Um, you didn't like Moon Knight? It was, I enjoyed it. It just didn't feel like it was part of the MCU because there was, I don't think there was one reference to any other th Marvel work that we've seen already. Like that I can think of. Like maybe someone like Mr. Marvel would know Easter yeah. eggs and stuff, but like watching this, I'm like, this could just be a standalone superhero thing that has nothing to do with the MCU. Like now I'm hopeful for the future. Cause I think how they intertwine everything is great. And I kind of wish they would do that with star Wars, like pay Kevin Feige, like a billion dollars and have him take over star Wars. That'd be kind of cool. I mean, but, we still have John Favreau. Well, I He's do. John Favreau and Dave Filoni, they're the goats, but... You got Taika coming aboard here soon. Mm hmm That is true. For a second t time. Yeah, so hopefully that answers your question about that, Lucy. I know when we had you, when we interviewed you a couple few weeks ago, you told us before the show that you haven't watched any of the Marvel stuff. I was like, you gotta watch the Marvel stuff. So I'm happy that you're diving into that whole thing. I think you're going to really enjoy how all the storylines come together. All right. And then she also mentioned that she's writing that fan fiction, Drew, that you suggested. So, yeah, I'm excited. That'll probably that. be on her podcast in the near future. So, yeah. I'm excited to listen to that. So, Mr. Marvel, what is your favorite show so far? Marvel show. Marvel so show. far, Moon Knight. Oh, oh dang. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Does okay. it tie well? Oh, it, it, it ties really well with the comic book. I was okay. very um, amazed, I guess is the best word to say, when they dropped it, and it, it was pretty spot on. That's okay. cool. I like that with the knowledge you have, you could say that it's spot on to what the comics mm -hmm. have. So you, I, you, you buy all the books and stuff? or Yeah, I mean, my girlfriend doesn't really let me buy a whole bunch of comic books these days. If I do, they're they're going on the wall behind me as display pieces. Gotcha. I, I still get to flip through them before uh, I hang them up. <laughs> so do you have collectible comics behind you? Is um, that what I those are? Or? I do have some. I know I don't think my camera on this angle real, really hit it that well, but I do have a, um empty spot that I am trying to procure – a Beta Ray Bill introduction comic. I guess that'd be Mighty Thor number 377. And that one runs for roughly around 1000 to $2,000. Hmm. 
and I just have a spot waiting for him. <laughs> That's I found the comic. It's just taking time to go out there and get it. That's fair. All right, cool. And then we'll just ask you, what is your number one favorite Marvel movie? Oh, so I actually did an episode on this a couple, I think last month. And my number one favorite movie is Thor Ragnarok. Ooh. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay, what's your thoughts on the new one? Oh, well, with the three minutes and 20 seconds of trailers that I watched, and I did a whole bunch of Instagram live reviews and some everything on this, it was going to take over the number one spot. But it didn't. It can't hold up to Ragnarok, but it was still you liked amazing. It? Oh, it was awesome. I so have not epic. yet to see it. Drew, come on. I Okay, I yeah. don't care about Thor at all. Like. Yeah, I like his, Ragnarok, but, but I've heard a lot I, of yeah. things about. I've never been impressed by his movies, but like I really kind of have a thumbs up on. Yeah, you 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 like it. I I say that fight on the moon thing, best fight in the MCU. That's um, my my. That's my hot take. awesome. And I don't know if, if the chat can see, I've got you know I am the strongest Avenger. Oh wow! Look at you. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, I was really disappointed in uh, the last Marvel movie before that one. So, oh yeah, I probably Whoa. shouldn't have said what I just said because I forgot what our next voicemail was. <laughs> oh, All right, uh, sorry, but well, thank you, Lucy, for that. But let's listen to Jerica's question, really quick question. Hey, Imperio, it's Jerica popping in with another question. Um, I was just wondering, what is your favorite Marvel movie? <laughs> Mine is currently Thor Ragnarok, but that almost got passed up by Spider-Man Homecoming. Um, let me know what you think, and may the force be with you. All right. So Jeremiah jumped the gun. And well, I, I did. I said that was my favorite <laughs> Thor movie. I really liked it, so I didn't answer what my favorite one is. But we know True. Mr. Marvel is number one. Um, my favorite Marvel movie would have to be uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. I think that movie is just a perfect movie. I it was super emotional, and I can't give any spoilers because Lucy. Lucy's in there. But I really adore that movie. I technically I've only seen it once, but like, cause I just been waiting for it to go on stream, like Disney Plus. But like, it's not gonna be on Disney Plus forever. So I probably just gotta like buy Still it. Making money on it, that's why. But I think that movie is just perfect in every way and super emotional. And yeah, Drew, what is your favorite? The same. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I awesome. I love that movie. It before that was probably maybe in game, maybe. Ooh. I, I did enjoy that movie. I loved Fat Thor. I thought it was pretty good. Um, I I really enjoyed that. But yeah, no. So I think the hype behind the Spider. I don't want to spoil it. Shoot, <laughs> Lucy, close your ears and throw. No, no, we will just. There's a lot that. of cool things in that, and for me, Andrew Garfield is my favorite Spider-Man. So I really enjoyed that film and all I right cool i still spoiled it but whatever sorry Lucy. uh all right thank you jerica great marvel question and our final question from will so let's listen to will hey empire video will here uh random question just popped in my mind um if you could live anywhere in the world with like you don't got a shop or something save it's like you move to antarctica obviously there's not going to be <laughs> there's not going to be a grocery store there but uh if you could move anywhere in the world where would it be i feel like we've answered this a thousand, thousand times on this podcast about traveling. Really? Where would you travel oh. to and all that stuff? So I feel like everyone knows my answer, mm -hmm. but Drew, mm -hmm. where would you want to move? Huh? That's a hard question. It's hard because well, I obviously haven't been everywhere. 
You know what I mean? Yep. But I would want to see if I like Japan, and then if I could do good in Japan, I'd probably anywhere out of the U.S. It would probably be Japan. I'm thinking, but I don't know. Kinda Mr. Hard. Marvel, what do you think? Um, oh, I mean, right off the bat, uh, New Tornsburg, home of uh, the New Asgard. <laughs> oh, <fine>. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. All right. That's if that's what you wanted. He didn't specify. No. Anyway, well, you can well, move the market if you wanted to. Yeah. Okay. Well, so. No tattoo um, for me personally. Then we're doing that. Tattoo. Oh, gross. Um, <laughs> so everyone knows. I said a million times. I don't care about traveling or moving or anything like that. Um, I like now. I technically I would like somewhere where it's a cooler temperature all year round. Would it be nice? I don't know if that's a thing where it's like. Like below. winter all year round? Not necessarily. Like Alaska? I, I wouldn't mind if it was... Okay, that's not true. Alaska can still get warm and hot, too. So Yeah, but their hottest is probably 70s, bro. Eh, it's more than that. But I hate summer. It's super hot. It's been cool the last couple of days in Minnesota right now, but... It's been rough last It's week. been rough this summer, and it's going to get hot again this weekend. This week, but... If there was like something more milder temperatures year round, where there was still a winter, that would be great. Um, uh, I've I've pondered recently about what it would be like to live in like a, a smaller community, not a big metro area, like a town of like ten thousand people. Like if I can just get my good internet, I'm gonna say the internet is the issue, Jeremiah, when it comes to yeah, small like, community. Like, okay, my parents live in the middle of nowhere, literally. And they get like five megabits. Like that's that's all they get up at their retirement place. So, but if I can get like a solid, at least five hundred megabits, I would be fine with moving out somewhere. But that's it. All right. Well, that's the last voicemail. Uh, we can just quick go over social media and stuff one last time, and then we'll get out. So. For our Empire Radio socials, uh, you can just click the link in the description wherever you're listening right now. Or if you just want to type in links.co slash Empire Radio, links with two eyes. There's a landing page for everything for Facebook, Instagram. Join the Discord, uh, our YouTube channel. Uh, there's a link for the illustration project that we have on there. We got some new people submitting things for that, so that's cool. And also, as we mentioned already tonight but the needlessly nerdy.com podcast network we're part of so go check that out and that being said mr marvel if you want to go over your socials again and where people can find you go right ahead yeah you could shoot over to instagram and just search at mr marvel's minutes and you could select my solo.to slash mr marvel's minutes and that'll bring you to my link tree with all my links all my podcasts and you know the network the needlessly nerdy network yeah, and we'll definitely put your information in the description of this video as yeah. well because we'll definitely be a supporter of Mr. Marvel for that. And, and Mr. Marvel, is all your stuff just audio? You don't um, YouTube or anything? Uh, most of it's just audio. We did um, a couple Instagram Live things. We did a Facebook Live. I did an interview with uh, the one and only Ray Buffer, um, actor, writer, director, extraordinaire. Um, oh, he's sweet. coming up in a movie. Uh, what is it? The, the Bullet Train? The new Brad Pitt movie, he'll be in that. Sick. Mm-hmm. Cool. Right. We we actually did a, a interview of one of the original actors for Boba Fett. <laughs> oh, nice. It's on our YouTube channel and on Instagram, I think, too. So yes. he's like, uh, it was just a stand-in, basically. So mm-hmm. when he's standing next to Vader, when Lando comes in, it's just him standing there <laughs> in the awesome. suit. And so he's like, we got to interview him about his experience as Boba Fett. This is a quick, uh, a small con that we went to. So that was cool. So yes. So thank you, Mr. Marvel, for joining us for the first collab for the New Nerdy Network. Sure. Um, we're excited for that. And maybe sometime in the future we'll be on your show. Um, I hope you had fun and because we definitely had fun talking. Um, yeah, this was any- a lot of fun. Yeah. So as always, you've been listening to Empire Radio. The best place for Star Wars content. But if you ever want to get more information and breakdowns about Marvel movies, shows, Mr. Marvel would be a great spot for you too. Especially Lucy. 
if you're watching stuff, you want information. He's probably going to be more spoilery until you finish everything, but um, sure. definitely go check his stuff out for information. So, anything else, boys? Mm, no, I don't think so. Not for me. All right. Cool. I'm excited to talk Marvel one day. So, all yeah, right. Cool. Make that invite. All right. Cool. Cool. So, you've been listening to another interview tastic episode of Empire Radio. I'm Jeremiah. I'm Drew. And I'm Mr. Marvel. And may the force be with you. Always.